Olson guitar was made for me by James Olson after my favorite Olson got stolen. He said, Dave, I want it to be a blessing to you. I'll just charge you for materials. I said, no, James, that's not fair. Come on. He said, well, I'll give you a good deal. Now, I figured I could afford a nice guitar, <clears throat> but if he's gonna make one for, for a good deal, then I ought to spend all the money I can on wood. And I had known this interesting character here in Asheville, North Carolina, who does work with fossilized ivory. He does work with, you know, pegs and, and making these uh, nuts and stuff out of fossilized ivory. And he's a quirky dude, you know. He's an interesting character because he loves one thing more than anything else in the world, and he will pursue it to the ends of the earth. So <clears throat> he makes interesting acquaintances with people who are just as passionate about guitars. And I told him this story about how James was going to build me this guitar. And he said, well, maybe I should call my friend would you like to have an Olsen with an Adirondack top? I said, I didn't think there was any anymore that's really, you know, beautiful. And he said, well, there's one. I said, tell me more. <laughs> and he said, well, see, there's this guitar builder in Tennessee whose wife works for the Forest Service. They do a lot of hiking. He found an Adirondack spruce in the Smoky Mountains on top of a ridge. And it had never been logged, it's just way up there. And he had always had his eye on that tree. Of course, it's a protected forest. He would never cut it down, I'm not saying that. But there was a hurricane that came through. It came quite a ways north. It came up into the Smokies. And the next time they hiked up there, that tree had fallen over and it just didn't have a good purchase with the roots because it had grown on this really, really rocky ridge. And the thing about Adirondack <clears throat> is that if the canopy changes while the tree is growing, the tree will grow fast, no matter how old the tree is. It could be growing nice and slow for 300 years one tree beside it falls and suddenly you get these huge growth rings. All the Adirondack that you can buy now has these huge growth rings because the trees are not growing in a virgin canopy. Well, Adirondack, of course, grows in the Adirondacks, but it also grows in the Smokies. And there was this one that grew on this rocky ridge that never quite had enough water because it didn't have a lot of soil. It was way up there. Just the roots were just trying to get purchase on this rock. And this guy had seen that this tree had fallen and he said to his wife, for the sake of guitar builders, we got to get a slice of that. So his wife went to her superiors and talked about getting a slice. No, it's protected forest, you can't do it. One slice, really? The tree has fallen down. No, no, no exceptions. It's a protected forest. No. So suddenly this guy is agonizing about like a little bit of this wood is so much more than none at all. And he's a guitar builder. What do you do? And the way I heard the story from Dan Lashbrook, who's the interesting character who makes this fossilized ivory stuff, is he says he was thinking one day, why not get a slice for a climate study you need a climate study, don't you? He said maybe his wife could pitch that to her superiors. So with a little finesse, apparently it happened that, yes, we do need a slice of that tree for a climate study. And wouldn't you know it, this guitar builder, out of the kindness of his heart, he volunteered. I don't know if this part's true. <laughs> but he managed to go up there and get three slices. One was a climate study. And the others just were under a tarp in somebody's truck and made it to his shop where he sawed it up and he, you know, made guitar tops out of it. And 
you've seen guitar tops they're these match sets you know and they're sitting there drying and they're you know there's sometimes the grain has a little thing in it and sometimes they're really good and so um when i heard this story from dan lashbrook i said well can you call your friend or can you i said can you give me your friend's number he says no i, I don't think he wants to do that he doesn't want to sell them i said well can you ask so the word comes back and he says well I do have a lot to build. I mean, I want to build all these guitars. He's, he's wanting to make his own guitars, but uh, he said, you know, I kind of would sell one, but in, I, I feel stupid like because I'd have to ask so much. And so I sent the message back, I'm getting a guitar at a really cool deal. The builder's gonna, you know, build it for materials, basically. So, how much would you have to charge me, you know? And the guy came back with like, well, it'd have to be like as much as a regular guitar. And I said, like, how much? <laughs> and finally he mentioned a price, which he assumed would make me go, forget it, I'm out of here. And I said, great, great, here's the money. And he was like, I can't sell it for that much. It's just a piece of wood. And I said, it's fine, really. So we sent it to James Olson up in Minnesota. <clears throat> and James calls me back a few days later. Oh, gee, Dave, oh, I'm, I'm sorry uh, to tell you, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think this is, could be Adirondack. I've seen a lot of Adirondack. You know, I, I go to all the trade shows, you know, and uh, it, it just doesn't grow like that, you know. So uh, it's, it's good wood, you know. I'll make a guitar out of it, but, uh, you know, I, I just don't want you to be misled. And I said, well, can I tell you a story of how this came to be? And I told him the whole story. And he said, well, I, I just don't think, uh, I mean, I could get a little sliver off the side and uh, send it to my friend who works at the, at the lab there at the university. And he could, you know, he could put it under the scope and he could see, but I, I don't think. And I said, okay, might as well send him a little sliver of it and, you know, see if it's Adirondack. I don't think it's, I said, okay. A couple weeks later, I get a call from James Olson. Ah, oh, Dave, yeah, James, uh, just curious if you could uh, give me the name of the guy that has that Adirondack. I said, no. <laughs> He's not selling it. <clears throat> but I got one top. And this is it. <clears throat> now, Adirondack, <clears throat> it doesn't grow like this. This tree grew so slowly that it looks like an old violin. I mean, it's just nuts how consistent it is. And the thing about Adirondack, you know, all those old Martins, they sound so good. They're so bright. Adirondack will give you that, the finish on the high frequency, that beautiful, pristine, you know, like real clear beauty. And normally I play Cedar Top Olsons because just love the warmth and the way they would break in so fast. So when I got this guitar, this guitar was basically saying to me, I was a tree like a minute ago. What do you, what do you expect of me? And I'm saying, okay, I'll give you some time. And I took it to Dan and I got my fossilized ivory nut and I got it all dialed in and I got my RMC pickup in it with the perfect intonation and, uh, you know, did all the stuff that I do. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you, the other wood. James, when I told him about this Adirondack, he said, you know, I've got this piece of Brazilian. I've had it in my shop since 70, I forget what he said, 72 or something, you know? And it's really pretty. So it's got all these beautiful colors. And, and uh, so I thought, yeah, well, since we've got all the best woods, take your time, James, you know? And uh, so the guitar is modest. It's not got all the, you know, distractions of the pearl. I love the the black fretboard and it's not just because of Tony Rice. It's because you're looking deep into the neck. You don't want to just see the surface shimmer. You want to look deep into the dark matter. 90 95% of the universe is dark matter. You want the fretboard to reflect the universal depth where this sound is coming from. I'm just being fun with you but what I love about this guitar is it is a it is spectacular heritage in terms of the wood. 
and simple in terms of how it dresses. It's like a billionaire in jeans kind of thing, you know. So, so as you can tell, the high frequency has this kind of, like the note has like a beginning, a middle, and an end. The note isn't just plink like it is on, for example, my guitars. <laughs> It's got a thing, you know, the high frequency. And now that this guitar has been around for a while, that low end is kicking too. So, let me play you a song. Diamond 
echoes deeper still And you'll always have what you gave to love You will always have what you gave to love The intonation is so good because Joe Glazier is the one that put these pickups in. And he's got that awesome German machine, you know, the one that dials in all the intonation perfectly. And this neck, I didn't tell you about the neck. There's only three Olsons that I know of that had a, have a rosewood neck. I had two of them. This is one. Um, the other one James Taylor has. And the rosewood neck... I love because it does this thing for the, the stiffness of the neck when you tune it down. As you know, the, the old school Olsen neck is very low profile this way. Um, and you can really reach around and, um, and, and yet it's, it does not, you know, you tune a string lower, the neck doesn't bend back. It's not springy on the truss rod like that because the, the wood itself is so stiff, especially with the the laminates of the maple in there. I, I am grateful that I got to play it again. It uh, makes me wish I had a extra chunk of change. But uh, when we uh, were, you know, at one point I had five Olsons, not counting the one that got stolen. And it was getting to be a bit of a problem, you know, like a 12-step program. Like, hi, I'm Dave, I buy Olsen guitars. Hi, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I kept thinking that if I had enough of them, I wouldn't worry about them. I could like check it on the airplane and just, you know, whistle down the jetway. It never actually happened. Especially with this guitar. Because as much as I could tell myself, oh, it's just an Olsen, I have another at home. I remembered the story of the tree that grew on the ridge with the rocky soil. And uh, I said, yeah, there's only one of those. So, it's nice, isn't it? <laughs>